how to find a game and habit where the odds are in your favor. You want to uh, explore the exploit trade-off. At the beginning of a new activity, there is a period of exploration where you want to cast a wide view and try a lot of things within your field. Okay, this is when you begin something. After the initial exploration, consider shifting to the best solution. So you work on an activity, a strategy, a habit that delivers the best results about 80% of your time and you keep exploring new opportunities for the remaining 20% of your time. And Google asks their employees to spend 80% of their week on their main job and 20% on projects of their choosing. Okay, so practically this could mean, if that didn't make sense, what this could mean is you could spend 80% of your time doing and doing the thing you need to do and 20% on the exploration, on finding new things, because there's a practicality that I need to put food on the table, I need to pay bills, I need to make income and money, right? And particularly for the people who are solidified in their careers for years and years, maybe you're in middle age or elderly, and you're feeling intimidated to start something new. Well, okay, that's fine. 80% can still remain on your main task and job, but 20% of your downtime, like 20%, that downtime, all right, instead of going to that TV or, 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 you know, doing those maybe, not time wasters, but maybe time that could be invested a little better elsewhere for now, that could be on the projects and the games and the habits that you want to experiment with. And so a great question to ask, like how do you find the game and habit and thing where the odds are in your favor? Well, you ask yourself, what feels fun? What, feel, what Where do you get enjoyment out of? What feels like work to others but play to you? What do you when you do something, you do an activity and task, when do you feel just that effortless time flying by? You're just like, oh my God, look at all the time that went by. Like this is an example. When I get in a flow state here, I can just bang out like an hour, two hours. Like I can do this for a little while, like streams of consciousness and just go. That's an example of, of how I, time can just go you know that's an, and that, that's that's a good example this is a game or habit where the odds are stacked in my favor it's not about me it's about you what can you do that odds are stacked in your favor what are you curious about chase your curiosities what do you where where are you gravitating your time in the in your downtime what are you reading what are you watching you can monetize and make make a business and money from pretty much anything a sign that you are made for a task is whether you can handle the pain or discomfort of a task easier than most people. Could be learning an instrument. Maybe some of you just can really push through like the grinding hours of just strumming on those guitar frets and pushing through the early discomfort of your fingers getting calloused up. Maybe you just get into a zone when you're playing that piano and you just forget about everything around you. When are you enjoying yourself while others are complaining? Perhaps that's what you were made to do designed to do if you were designed right maybe that's your natural proclivity i know i can handle and tolerate a lot of discomfort in the pursuit of knowledge particularly about human science particularly and i can handle a great deal of pain and discomfort in the execution of exercise science in the pursuit in the, in the, in the execution of different exercise modalities particularly weight training running all right i'm on the path that feels natural to me when do you feel alive? Like the real you. Energetic. When do you feel your most energetic? What are you doing? We need to ask these questions. Right now, you need to pause it. Stop. Write it down. Think. I know one of the times I feel most energetic is when I'm delivering. When I'm delivering like this, whether it's to a camera or whether it's to a classroom of students or whether it's to my clients. That's a time where I feel most energetic. When I'm communicating what's inside me. No internal judgments or people pleasing, just feelings of engagement, focus, and enjoyment. Whenever you feel authentic and genuine, you are heading in the right direction. Lastly, if you can't find a game that is in your favor, create one. Scott Adams, the cartoonist behind Dilbert, said, Everyone has a few areas in which they can be the top 25% in with some effort. For me, I can draw better than most people, but I'm hardly an artist. And I'm not any funnier than the average comedian who never makes a big, but I'm funnier than most people. The magic is few people can draw well and write jokes well. It's the combination of the two that makes what I do so rare. This is so beautiful. You don't have to win by being the best at one thing. What if... What are you good at? What am I good at that we could be in the top 25, top 10% in, but we could combine together? 
Scott Adams, he's a cartoonist, writes his cartoons, and he happens to make great jokes from them. He has, he's a, like a great ability to, to write jokes. He's not the best. He's not stepping on stage. He's not selling out Nef. He's not stepping like selling out, uh, making documentary, uh, sorry, uh, making comedy specials on, on Netflix. And he might not be selling like a best-selling author, uh, you know, for a writing or cartoonist, but he's good enough where he can make a really good living and have an outlet for both these creative outlets that he is good at. And so there's numerous examples we can go at. If I would just pause and think for a second, what is two things that, that you or I could combine together? You know, that could be, it's going to be really helpful if you have a strong communication and leadership skill set and ability to communicate and you're in a field with a lot of theoretical underpinnings. Like you could be a scientist, which technically my degree may call me, but just because you're a scientist doesn't mean you know how to deliver the information. There's a lot of researchers and scientists out there who can't do this, don't feel confident stepping out there and communicating, solidifying ideas from complex to simple. That's a skill that I've been able to to do. It's not as clear cut as Scott, where it's like cartoonist and, and joke writer. But when you can't win by being the best, you can win by being different and good. So you wanna find the cross section of skills that you have that you can combine. By combining your skills, you reduce the level of competition and create more of a point of difference, making it easier for you to stand out. You can shortcut your need for a genetic advantage or 10,000 hours by playing a different game. A good player works hard to win the game everyone else is playing. A great player creates a new game that favors their strengths and interests. And if you're not naturally gifted, you can be in the top 10% by choosing a small handful of categories and being very good at them instead of trying to be world-class in the top 20%. For me, like that's coaching, yoga teacher, nutrition, communication skill set. And then you could branch off and we could really like, oh, how does my media company play in, play into this? You know, with Jungle Beats and uh, reviewing music, how does, how does this play into it with my uh, ability to synthesize uh, philosophy, psychological concepts and habits? influence power how does that tie into this how does my podcast tie into this that's another side endeavor where you're where you're communicating ideas and conversational format you know because it's not as left field as like you know i know how to paint it's not I don't, there's no like there's no heart if it's a hard skill it's it's probably more clear cut to define and combine these are more soft skills i believe for me if i define that correctly and maybe this is an example of like, could you choose university college units where you design the course around your interests as much as possible rather than being dictated by a curriculum? You can kind of create the framework and game to which you can learn most effectively. Think about it yourself. You want to pick behaviors that align with your character, your natural skills, and you work, want to work hard on the things that come easy to you, that you're curious about, that you just get lost in. And you, if you could combine fields and fields of expertise and interests together, well, you might then put yourself in your own game and field where there's only a few of you. There aren't many strength and conditioning health coaches who are degree qualified, who are a yoga teacher, and who can communicate complex ideas into simple in a effective format or in, 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 in this type of format. And, you know, it makes me think like, okay, what if we added the understanding of what if you could be like a, a zoologist on top of that? What, what if you combine that with like, okay, now I have a really good understanding of the human body. Now I have a really good understanding of animal science. I can then help the human animal. I can bridge between human and animal interconnectedness to solve greater problems. What if you could be like Scott Adams? He's the, he's the cartoonist who writes jokes. What if you could be the guy who understands artificial intelligence in the context of video games or artificial intelligence with modeling? Like you actually make little cut, like little models of like figurines. Like how could you automate and create an artificial intelligence, maybe 3D printing type of thing around that? And so these are these are just various just random thoughts that I'm having that 
you know, we keep, if we all just stop and think about, it's like, huh, there's a lot of things out there that we don't have to just be like the doctor. You don't just have to be the chef, right? You can be the chef who also uh, is really good presence on camera and, and like maybe he's really funny or she's really funny and they can be like the comedian chef. Makeup tutorials are very popular on YouTube and I saw this one, you know, because obviously that's what I watch in my spare time. I, I just happened to see it and hear of it, you know, people who are into criminology and like the criminologist who is uh, doing makeup tutorials but while she's doing it, she's telling a story about this uh, like mystery murder cases. Like, wow, that's, that's a really good niche. Like, that's really interesting. Now you're going to capture people's interest while, you know, in, in one of the most popular markets out there, particularly for women, uh, makeup tutorials. Like, that's a that's a multi-multi-multi-million uh, dollar market. So, wow, okay. There's a lot of opportunities here. So you want to pick behaviors that align with your character, natural skills, and work hard on the things that come easy. You can create the game where the odds are stacked in your favor by observing your own character traits, who you are, what you're good at, by, again, a further understanding of what your personality is, what your big five personality is, where you sit on that spectrum, and put yourself in a position where you can run downhill instead of uphill by putting yourself in an environment where your character your the characteristics of yourself are naturally suited to the field you want to operate in if you made it this far thanks for staying patient with me i'm just i just kind of let myself sit with some of these ideas it's what i really like doing i don't i don't want to the, the aim is not to edit this stuff at all uh if i can um so you're just going to hear 30 40 minute streams of consciousness and um that's the third last chapter for this plus a conclusion uh, for, uh, for this uh, book. Uh, next week, we're going on chapter 19, The Goldilocks Rule. How do we stay motivated in life and work? How to stay focused? Thank you for watching. All of these are available, all podcast platforms. If you want to see, at Alexander Emanuel on Instagram, Facebook, uh, all podcast platforms, subscribe, hit the notifications so you don't miss. A lot of you do not do that, but you enjoy the videos. It would help me. Um, but if you don't watch them anymore, or if you watch them sporadically, unsubscribe. Get out of here, man. Get out of here. You know, these huge inflated subscriber numbers. I'd rather have the active people on here, right? Rather the people who are actually actively engaged. I'd rather that be the real reflection of uh, how many people follow us. Or we just remove the numbers entirely and we just don't even think about it. I'd love that too. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.